Hello and welcome to the IDKD Refresher Series on Diseases of the Brain, Head and Neck and Spine. My name is Walter Kacharzik. My academic appointment is in the Departments of Medical Imaging and the Division of Neurosurgery in the Department of Surgery at the University of Toronto in Canada. I practice as a diagnostic neuroradiologist at the Toronto Joint Department of Medical Imaging in Toronto, Canada. The patient we are going to discuss is a 60-year-old male who presented to the emergency room of our hospital with progressively worsening shortness of breath over the past week. He had also complained of frequent urination and having to drink lots of fluids because of ongoing thirst. His past history is unremarkable, apart that he had a history of cigarette smoking, approximately one pack a day for the past 30 years. He had no known history of cardiac or lung disease and was otherwise well. Multiple lab tests were done. These only demonstrated a mild anemia and a dilute urine. They were otherwise normal. This was followed by a series of imaging tests, which I'm going to show you next. The first set of images I'm going to show you are unenhanced MRI images focusing on the area in and around the pituitary gland and hypothalamus. On your left, you see an unenhanced T1-weighted sagittal image. In the middle, an unenhanced T1-weighted coronal image. And on your right, a T2-weighted coronal image. When you analyze these images, there are a few subtle findings that you will see. One is that the high signal intensity that's typically seen in the region of the poster lobe is absent. Uh, two, the area of the pituitary stalk is slightly thickened. And then on the coronal images, along the walls of the inferior part of the third ventricle, which is where the hypothalamus is located, you see bilaterally symmetric areas of low signal intensity on both sides. I'm showing the one on the patient's right. And in the same area, see subtle high signal intensity on the T2-weighted coronal images. Again, I'm just showing the lesion on the right, but the lesion also exists on the left. Contrast was administered intravenously and the imaging was repeated. And with on the contrast enhanced images through this area, you see areas of abnormal enhancement in the regions that I had circled on the previous slide on either side of the walls of the third ventricle in the region of hypothalamus, bilateral abnormal high signal intensity. On the sagittal image, thickening and enhancement in the upper pituitary stalk extending up into the hypothalamus, thickening of the pituitary stalk, and on the parasagittal images just off to one side, we see the enhancement up in the hypothalamus. You should not see enhancement in the uh, hypothalamus, although the pituitary stalk itself does enhance, but it is thick in this particular case. Let's look at the unenhanced and enhanced images, which I've shown you all together in one slide, so we can cross correlate the findings on the unenhanced images with the findings on the enhanced images. So on the upper left, you see the unenhanced T1 weighted and T2 coronal images. I've magnified the T2 coronal image here to show you the uh, same area, which is shown as hyperintensity on the T2 weighted coronal images. Uh, and with contrast enhancement, we can cross correlate these, seeing that the areas that enhance on the coronal images are the same areas that are subtly hypo intense on the T1 weighted coronal images and subtly hyper intense on the T2 weighted images. So what we have is an adult with shortness of breath, polyuria, which is found to be due to diabetes insipidus and a bilaterally symmetric lesion in the upper pituitary stalk and bilaterally in the hypothalamus. As part of the investigation, 
high resolution CT of the chest was performed, which is shown here. In the middle, you have the scope view from the chest CT. And along the right hand side, you have representative transverse slices through the upper lungs, mid lungs, and lower lungs. And you will notice that the abnormalities are mostly in the mid and upper lungs, in particular the upper lungs, where you see a reticular nodular infiltrate throughout the lungs bilaterally. And in addition to that, you see small microcysts with thin walls bilaterally in multiple locations. So putting the findings together, this person has lesions in his hypothalamus and pituitary stalk and bilaterally in his lungs, mostly in the upper lungs. Based on the combination of findings, the main differential diagnosis for these abnormalities in this patient was between Langerhans cell histiocytosis and sarcoidosis with a lesser possibility that it could be metastatic germinoma. The ultimate diagnosis was Langerhans cell histiocytosis or LCH. Other entities were considered such as other metastases and lymphoma, but on the combination of findings, both were much less likely in, in terms of diagnosis. Diabetes insipidus or DI in these diseases is caused by infiltration of the pituitary stalk and hypothalamus, which disrupts the synthesis and or transport of vasopressin, resulting in the symptoms of polyuria and polydipsia characteristic of diabetes insipidus. Imaging shows enhancing lesions in these regions, which can be multiple and can be occur in other areas in the brain beyond the hypothalamus with variable degrees of mass effect. These additional tumorous lesions in the brain can occur in virtually any location. They can also involve the meninges and pineal, and you get non-tumorous lesions such as patchy enhancement, various degenerative type lesions, and white matter lesions. LCH and sarcoid can affect multiple organs outside the central nervous system, including bone, skin, lymph nodes, and lungs, as well as some other organs. The main differential diagnosis in this case, based on the hypothalamic and lung involvement and the patient age was sarcoidosis. Sarcoid affects the lungs more often than LCH, but the pattern of lung involvement in sarcoid, although it has some similarities, such as that reticular nodular pattern of infiltration, predominantly upper lobe, it differs from LCH in that LCH also has microcysts which does not occur in sarcoid. High resolution CT and LCH shows small nodules with these thin walled upper lobe cysts with preserved lung volumes. These cysts are not seen in sarcoid. An interesting fact is that pulmonary LCH is highly associated with smoking it, and smoking cessation is the key to treatment with improvement in a third of these cases if smoking can be stopped. Some useful references on this topic are shown on this slide. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to reviewing further cases with you in the future. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned with IDKD for more cases in the future.